We're in the series of gratitude. Why? Because we're in a season of holiday. We're in that season where we should be remembering what has happened over the year. And, and, and like we talked about last week, is not all of it is bad. Not everything in our life is bad. And how do we shift? We shift it with this thing called gratitude. It's just the the reality that there are good things in our life. There are positive things either happening or has happened. You say, well, it's not real positive right now, but it hasn't always been that way. Amen? And we allow the negative to overcome the positive when, when gratitude, what gratitude does is it takes and it reverses that and it overcomes the negative with the positive. It's like, yeah, right now it's not that good, but God, you have been good to me. God, you have blessed me. I know that we have some of our families watching right now on YouTube and they, they checked in and said, hey, we're sick. There's a lot of people sick right now. And, and they're like, hey, we, we're actually contagious. And I'm like, keep that at your house. Can I get an amen? amen. I'm just trying to be a shepherd and protect you. Amen. And, and so, uh, you, know, but they're, you know, but it's like we're sick right now. But God, you've been really good throughout the year. Because the negative is our natural. Hmm. Come on. So it's just easy to be negative, isn't it? I mean, it's just easy to turn on the news and go, boy, there's a lot of things that stink right now. And begin to carry that into your life and say, well, yeah, I know, and it stinks around me too. And, you know, if you feed the natural, you get the natural. So if you're is negative and you feed it you're going to begin to exude negative but the cool thing is is the story can be different and if we feed the supernatural and that's where gratitude comes in if we feed the supernatural guess what we begin to exude the supernatural if we resist the natural these things are negative my life stinks Everything around me has stunk, and all, you know, it's just like, I've never had a good day. That's not exactly true. That's just you feeding the negative. But if you can begin to feed the supernatural and begin to look outside of the natural, die to self, and go, you know what? Everything is just not that bad. I am thankful that I even have the ability to complain. <laughs> I hope you're not, like, grateful for that. I'm just grateful for the ability to complain. Don't do that, okay? That's negative, okay? <laughs> Some people embrace that, like, oh, I'm grateful for that. Thank you, Jesus. No, don't do that. That's not, I'm just saying, like, you, you're alive. You're breathing. You're awake, okay? You're able to eat, right? You say, well, yeah, but other people. Don't worry about other people. You see... Gratitude resists the temptation to compare. See, when we feed the natural, we start comparing. And guess what? There's always going to be somebody that has something that you want. My daddy used to say this all the time. It was his humble way of being envious. And he would say, I wish I had that one and he had a better one. I'm just, I'm like... <laughs> That, and then, that, you know, you turn into your dad and you end up saying stuff like that, you know, it's just like, like, I want what he wants, but I want him to have a better, you know, it's just like, we, mm, mm, gratitude resist, <laughs> gratitude resist that comparison thing. How many of us are comparing ourselves to somebody around us? How many of us are on Instagram and we're following these pages of people and we find ourselves begin to compare ourselves? Maybe you're not Instagram yet. Facebook, how about that, amen? And, 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 and I, I, I'm just chasing a rabbit here. I did find out some positive news about Instagram that they're, 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 they're thinking about taking away the line. That's awesome. I think that's amazing. So people can stop liking stuff that they shouldn't like. <laughs> it's getting people out of trouble, you know? It's like, you know, I mean, if I post and I say that I had a death in my family, don't like that. I, I'm just, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Are you with me? Like, 
like, like, I'm going, okay, well, mm, all right, you know, but anyway, it's, it's, I think it's positive because it's going to cut down that whole, I want to look for likes, I need likes, I'm going to do this for likes, I'm, you're trying to compel, because we're in this comparison thing, gratitude just says, you know what, it's good where I am, it's good where I am, and, and last week, at this passage in Philippians 4, uh, Philippians 4, 4 through 6, and I want us to get back into that, get grounded with it. It's our foundational verse for this series, uh, and Paul, again, talking to the church at Philippi, and he says this, beginning in verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. You know what my goal is for church? To rejoice. To rejoice. I've spent, I've spent, a lot of my life in the morning sense of church. Like Jesus is dead, all of that. But I came to realize that Jesus is alive, man. Like God is still alive and he is worthy of praise. And man, he's done so many good things in my life. And this is what Paul's talking about. He's bringing the, the, the Philippian church back to their senses in the spirit. And he's saying, hey, man, why don't you rejoice? And oh, by the way, if you didn't hear that one, rejoice again. Because you've got something to be happy about. So rejoice always. He says, let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Watch this. Be anxious for nothing. And then he says, he feels that. Okay, so now if I'm not anxious, the vacuum. You know what he says? The vacuum is this. Here's what he says. But in everything, in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to the Lord. And the peace of God, we talked about this last week, the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your mind in Jesus Christ. Here's what we learned last week. Just a little recap. Number one, gratitude decreases depression. The, the attitude of gratitude decreases depression. When you begin to think about all of the positive things in your life, how, how many of you, some old school church up in here? Anybody, somebody, y'all don't, some of y'all don't even know what that means. Okay, that's cool. All right. But even back in the day, my daddy was the, song, was the song leader. And so back in the day, we used to sing this song called Count Your Many Blessings. Name them. See, y'all, yes, y'all, y'all raised the same church. You know, and, and, but I mean, we're just like, we just sang it, sang it, sang it, sang it, sang it. But it's true that we need to stop and go, you know what? God, you've been good. God, you, when you begin to do that, depression begins to flee. Because now you're doing something outside the natural. Watch this. An attitude of gratitude increases happiness. It's what we're all looking for. When you begin to count the things. God has done in your life, and you begin to understand that God has been good. We're going to switch up here. That God has been good in, in your life. You, you begin to feel this sense of joy. Things begin to change in you. You begin to go, you know what? I, I'm, I'm feeling better. But the attitude of gratitude also strengthens your resiliency. I can keep going because, God, you're still good. It strengthens your ability to make it through the negative seasons because while that season might be real right now, because of your remembrance, because of your testimony, because of your attitude of gratitude, you know that, God, you've, you've been faithful before, you'll be faithful now. God, you've never abandoned me then, you're not going to abandon me now. You see, we complain about the negative seasons in our lives, but they really strengthen us. So when we go through the next season, we go, God, you are still faithful today. You've always been faithful. You, I didn't die in that last season. I'm not going to die in in this season you see that's what gratitude does it begins to strengthen our resiliency more and more and more and more but gratitude is an attitude now i want you to see this attitudes lead to action your attitude will determine how you act you don't believe me let's define attitude attitude is this i, I like this definition 
a settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something, especially, notice this, especially when it shows in the way that we behave. So guess what? As a man thinks, so he is. As a man thinks, a good little proverb for us. As a man thinks, so he is. Attitude drives your actions. Guess what? You don't need to tell anybody that you have a negative attitude. I mean, you just don't have to walk around and go, man, I'm just negative today. Like, I'm just feeling negative today. I just got a bad attitude today. You know, people are going to go, oh, really? We didn't notice. (laughs) You know? I mean, (laughs) no, I've just been avoiding you for no reason this morning. You know? You know, I mean, because our attitude is what's driving. It's showing how we feel. It's showing how we think. And so when we have an attitude of gratitude, it leads to certain actions. Are you with me? If you are, say I am. So it leads to certain actions. Always remember that, whether, whether in, the, in the church realm or in your daily life, in your marriage and wherever, if your attitude stink, your actions will stink. If your attitude is great, your actions will be great. Okay? Are you with me? I mean, it's the driving motivation for why we do. If your attitude stinks about your job, You're going to have bad days at your job. Your boss will never be good enough. Your coworkers will always be a problem. You'll never make enough money. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're, you're going to be like, everything stinks. While God is blessing you the whole time through that job. Mm. He's paying your bills with that job. He's feeding your family with that job. He's supporting his kingdom with that job. You see? It's our attitude. Your attitude changes your whole work environment. And you won't have to tell people, like, man, I got a good attitude about my job today. I just want you to know I got a good attitude about my job. I'm going in. I got a good I, I'm to check in. I'm, I got a good attitude about my job. No, you just go in with a good attitude. People are going to know that you have a good attitude about your job. You're probably going to go, hey, you know what, boss? I'll do that. I won't complain. I, I'm just, I'm just going to go do it. People will be attracted to that. People are attracted to good attitudes. Amen. And so maybe God has set you where you are to be a difference maker with just your attitude because it is showing through your behavior what you think and how you feel. Hmm, can't hide that. But it leads to an action. And one of the actions that I want to talk about today is this, is the action of worship. An attitude of gratitude will always lead us to worship. Are you with me? Always lead us to worship. Now, listen, this whole worship thing has got blown out of proportion a little bit because one group says you got to worship this way. One group says you got to worship this way. And we find ourselves being like the woman at the well that encountered Jesus. You know, the Jews say, I have to worship this way. The Samaritans say, I have to worship this way. Amen? When all God wants is your heart. So if you worship with your hands in the air, amen, praise God. That's awesome. That's you. If you worship with your hands down, praise God. Amen. That's you. It's your heart he's after, not your hands. (laughs) Come on, somebody. It's not your hands. Okay? Okay? He's not after your dancing ability. (laughs) Two wild and crazy guys. Some of y'all don't know what that is. Okay, so, I mean, he's not after your dancing skills. And some of you don't need to dance. I'm just saying, you know, God knows that. He didn't equip you with that. All right? He's not looking for your dancing. He's looking for your heart. But it will always lead to worship. When you begin to give God praise for what he's done you begin to count how all of the good in your life you're gonna look worship will almost be spontaneous you won't have to be prompted to worship you might break out in worship at your house 
You might break out in worship in your workplace. And they'll be going, boy, that dude's charismatic. When they do that, you go, amen. Because you know what that means? Spirit filled. Like, amen, I, whatever, dude. But it's like my attitude's different. Now I'm, I'm collecting, I'm counting not the negative, but I'm counting the positive. Just like last night, elections may not have gone all the way that we thought they were going to go, but praise God for our system. You see? Praise God that I had a voice in that. I did my part. I've been given that right by some faithful men and women in our military that stand in the gap to preserve that. Come on, somebody, in the house. And so I'm just grateful. See, I mean, at the end of the day, it turned out how God wanted it to turn out. Romans 13, go back and read it. He sets in place those that would be over us, and I'm not afraid of any of them. I know God's going to do what he's going to do. See, it's our attitude that drives that, and attitude leads to worship. Are you with me? Are you with me? Because I believe Scripture teaches us that we should be worshipful beings. We should be worshipful creations. We are created with a voice. We are created with the ability to declare, and some of us, the ability to sing. All of y'all are going, I know, that's me. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Joyful noise. <laughs> Joyful noise. And I love Nicole, and Nicole's going to be bringing the word next week, and, uh, but, but look, I love that girl. Ooh, that's my queen. I love that girl. <sighs> but, <laughs> mm. and we're all, yeah, I, I'm deciding whether how bad or trouble I want to be in. Uh, but, but, you know, I, I just, I sing. How about that? I sing. Amen? And, and uh, so, yeah, and, you know, but I love you, baby. She knows it. She knows it. She'll tell you straight up. Like, she ain't be gifted with that. But she's been giving them some other stuff. I'm grateful for that. Amen. So I, what I want you to grab is, 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 is gratitude leads to, uh, it, it leads to worship. But when we think about worship, are we, are we one-dimensional? Hmm. Because when God talks about worship, he's talking about a wholeness. He's talking about how we're living how we're speaking, how we're declaring, how we're loving. I mean, he's talking about the whole package, and we go, oh, well, you know what? I go to church to get my worship on. Well, what do you do at your house? What do you do in your workplace? What do you do in the marketplace? What do you do at Walmart when there's no self-checkouts available? Amen? And you go back and forth across Walmart trying to find one. You know? <laughs> Just stay put in worship. Just say, thank you, God, that I'm able to buy whatever it is I'm buying because you can't get out of Walmart without busting 100. Can I get an amen? I mean, this, that's Walmart. And we love Walmart. Boo, we love Walmart. I know. But we love Walmart. It supports. So... But, you know, I mean, I'm just saying. But, 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 but uh, you're getting this, is that let's unbox worship a little bit because when you begin to look at all the good things in your life, man, you're going to, like, it's going to be everywhere. It's going to infiltrate your life because it's an attitude, and your attitude's going to begin to show out in your behaviors. It's going to begin to show out maybe in some thank yous, and I appreciate you, and a good text instead of a negative text, a positive post instead of a negative post. You know, it's just going to begin to show out in all of your life, and all of that is worship but I want I want to read a few worship passages to you Psalms 100 you have that there Psalms 100 there's some key things I want you to see here and I really want you to get the attitude 
I really want you to capture the attitude happening in Psalms 100. And it says this, shout joyfully. Amen. How about that? That means like with a smile on your face. Somebody, just smile. Just smile for a second. It's not that hard. He says, shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Verse 2, serve the Lord with, uh uh-oh, gladness. Like, thank you, God, for letting me have the ability to serve. Thank you for letting me serve children, to serve at the door, to serve on the altar, to serve in the background, to, to, to serve people every day of the week. Thank you, God. It says, joy, serve with gladness. Come before him, uh-oh, with joyful singing. Now, this is where I do want to get into how we sing. I think we need to sing with a a, a joyful noise because God is alive and he's done so much and, 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 and he's brought us alive. And man, it needs to be filled with joy and a joyful singing. And he goes on and it says, know the Lord himself is God and he is who has made us and not we ourselves, that we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. If you could just sit and meditate on that one moment, it's like, I'm God, I'm I'm God's, and he's got me. I'm his sheep, he has put me in his green pastures. Man, God, you are so good. That I didn't make myself You formed me in my mother's womb. And you set your path and your plan in me. Man, God, you are good. That's gonna, that's gonna, it's gonna exude, it's gonna come out in the behavior of worship in our lives. And he goes on and it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and give thanks to him and bless his name. How many of you showed up today, woke up today and said, I'm going into the house of God today. Come on, somebody. I'm going into the house of God today. And when I bust through those gates, I'm gonna do it with gladness in my heart. I'm gonna give God praise. This, I am excited about entering his courts today. Because I'm afraid a lot of times we wake up, we go, I got to go to church. And we kind of worship that way. See, that's attitude. But when we bust through the gates with thanksgiving in our spirit and we begin to declare better is one day in the house than a thousand elsewhere. Look, when we begin to bust through with thanksgiving, people are going to know you've got a good attitude. Amen. That, that you've been you've been counting some blessings in your life. Are you with me? So enter his course with thanksgiving. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Listen, the 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 passion translation says it this way affectionately bless his beautiful name. Not as somebody who's distant and disconnected, but somebody who's close. Affectionately. Sometimes that may look like laughing and joyfulness. Sometimes it may look like weeping. But it's still with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving becomes the thread of worship. Without thanksgiving, it's really hard to worship. You with me? Thanksgiving changes the story, and it gives thanks to the Lord. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. Come on, say that with me. The Lord is good. Man, he is so good. All good things come from him. Man, he is the best gift giver ever. <laughs> Ever. Best gift giver. And all the good things in your life come from God because he is good. He loves to bless his children. His, his loving kindness is everlasting. His faithfulness to all and his faithfulness to all generations. Listen, God is never going to end and he's never going to change. That means he will always be good and all good's always going to flow from him. And when we stand in his shadow, he is able to bless us with blessings innumerable. Are you with me? How's your attitude? 
See? Because the psalmist has a really amazing attitude right now. All right, yeah? Like, if you were to sit down and write a psalm, that's just a song, write a psalm, what would it look like? Would somebody be all jacked up after they read it? Like, who going to enter Thanksgiving? Oh, man. They could be like, I got to go to church today. I have my job. Like, God, get me out of here. You know, would it, be, would it bust the charts or would it get lost in the chart? You know, I mean, this is, this is hey, this, this song right here went to the top of the chart because it got included in the word of God. Can I get an amen? And, and, and God himself through his spirit is encouraging us that we need to have an attitude of gratitude and it will always lead to worship. And when it leads to worship, you don't have to tell anybody about your attitude. It's just exuding out of you. Amen. Watch this. Psalms 150. This is how this is how he closes the Psalms. Now, there are a lot of Psalms that are lamenting, but he closes with this attitude. Watch this. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequal greatness. Look, praise him with a blast of the ram's horn. Anybody got a ram horn right now? Nobody got one? Okay. All right. I was just checking sometimes. Anyway, praise him with the lyre and the harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Watch out. Watch out. You're going, well, do I have to do that? No, but what's happening here is the attitude of freedom. Is You know what he's saying? He's saying, man, if you got a, if you got a horn, blow it. If you've got a harp, a strum it. If you've got a tambourine, pound it. If you want to dance, dance. He's not saying you have to. He's saying when you begin to praise God, worship is free. Mm. Watch this. And praise him with the strings and flute. Praise him with the clashing of cymbals. Praise him with the loud ganging, uh, uh, clanging cymbal. And let everything that breathes Sing praises to the Lord. He ends the book of Psalms with praise the Lord. Come on, come on, somebody. How many of us at the end of our life, the very last statement is going to say praise the Lord? Man, I've read some amazing tombstones. Some of them just said, I just made it. I'm like, dang, all right. <laughs> Our, our story should always end with praise the Lord. That's the, because uh, you know what? I can't stop. I can't forget all that God has done for me. He has been so rich to me. He has blessed me so much. And that attitude changes our lives. But here's what I want you to see just for the application today is worship. That, that, that attitude of gratitude, watch this leads to worship and that worship becomes a weapon. Let me give you this statement that when we have an attitude of gratitude, we begin to worship and when we begin to worship, we begin to wield a weapon in the spirit. You know, we'll do this in times of trouble. We'll go to Ephesians 6 and we'll go, oh, I war not against flesh and blood, but against uh, powers of darkness and principalities and all of the, of the atmosphere and all that. And we'll go, well, yeah, that's where I'm doing. But then we try to fight it in the flesh. But see, if we are in Christ, we become spiritual beings. We become those of the spirit. And so guess what? We've got to fight in the spirit. Worship becomes a weapon that we wield against the forces of our life. Now, I've just, I've always been a fighter. God's working that out on me, but I mean, you talk to my parents, they, they got the whole, they like kept a book of them. I don't know what that was about, but they know more fights I was in than they did, than I knew. But you know what that got me? Messed up. I'm fighting in the flesh. I need to be honest with you, in my journey in Christ, there were times where I tried to fight spiritual things in the flesh too, and I ended up worse for the wear. But we step into a new realm. We step into a new fight. We step into the fight with the Spirit. And one of the weapons that God gives us is worship. 
Worship is a weapon, especially during tough times. Let me give you a couple of things that that weapon of worship will do. Real quick, one, worship is a weapon that drives off the enemy. Worship drives off the enemy. You feel like you got something going on at your house, put some worship music on rather than some secular music. I mean, I'm just music-oriented. I like almost every kind of music. I know more music than I probably should. And so I know the difference. Worship is a weapon whether you're singing it or not. If you put on some worship music in your house, your attitude in your house is going to change. Something's going to change. You're fighting something in your house, put some worship music on. And look, put it on loud. Let God begin to use something because worship through singing and through voice is just declaring who God is again and again. I mean, it's not just saying, man, the enemy's going to defeat me. Lord, the enemy's got me. The enemy's going to chew me up. Look, that's not worship. Worship is going, God, you got this. God, you're going to defend. God, you've been faithful. God, your word is true. And it begins to be declared and infiltrate your house and begins to drive off. Worship in a lifestyle drives the enemy off. It's an attitude. No, I'm not. I'm not. Nope. You're not. Not today, Satan. Mm-mm. Not today, Satan. Because God is good. And God is good. We just go old school today. Too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> Amen. Watch this. Let me let me give you an example of how worship was used in 1 Samuel 16:23. Now, this this is when Saul was king. David was coming into the scene, and Saul had been given an evil spirit. Disobeyed God. God removed his spirit, sent a tormenting spirit. And David comes into this picture, and it says this, And whenever the tormenting spirit from God troubled Saul, David would play the harp, and then Saul would feel better, and the tormenting spirit would do what? Would go away. Because, listen to me, the enemy cannot stand in the presence of worship to God. Are you with me here? Now, you, you can invite the enemy in, but you can also cast the enemy out. It also says, Scripture also says, in the name of Jesus, demons have to... Worship may just be you walking around going, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Just walk around your workplace tomorrow and do that. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'll call some conversation. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus. But maybe Jesus needs to be spoken in your house a little more. Maybe it does need to be spoken in your workplace. Maybe it needs to be spoken during that season and just go, Jesus, right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Maybe we need to allow worship to exude because those tormenting spirits are, have no countering. They have no opposition, and we need to push back a little bit. We need to go, no, 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 no. You know, I'm tired of you winning. No, no. You see, Christians, listen, let me tell you something. Christians are not, are, are, we're, we're not saved to be defensive. We're saved to be offensive. We're saved to go against the grain. We're saved to push back against the enemy. We've been given freedom to free other people. We've been free free to go into areas and push back the gates of hell. And we're doing it through this attitude of gratitude. I'm so grateful for what you've done, God. I'll go wherever you send me. God, thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for saving me. I want to see other people saved. You've set me free. I want to free other people. God, I'll do what you want, where you want, when you want it. Here I am. I serve you because I... I serve you because I love you. God, you've been so good to me, I can't help it. And when we go back, we begin to defeat and drive out the enemy. Watch this. Worship becomes a weapon and is a weapon that drives off false emotions. We talked a little bit about that last week. But but I'm going to give you this. 
If you're feeling anxious, worship. If you feel like your world's caving in, worship. If you're feeling depressed, worship. I don't feel like worshiping. Listen, worship's an attitude, not a feeling. If you begin to worship, you're going to drive depression off. I'm feeling afraid. Worship. I'm feeling unworthy. Worship. See, worship, it drives out the lie and replaces it with the truth of God. But if we don't ever worship, all we're doing is saturating ourselves with lies. All we're doing is allowing that lie to infiltrate our lives and to consume us. Look, guys, you got to stand up and fight back again. You got to stand up and go, you know what, God? You've been too good. I've got too much to worship you about. I don't believe these lies. You love me. You, You said that perfect love drives out fear. Therefore, I have nothing to fear in my life. You've always taken care of me. So anxiety, you got to get out of here because my God is faithful. When you begin to push back, you begin to drive out those lies of emotion. And really, when you begin to have an attitude of gratitude, you are grounding yourself in truth, not emotions. In truth. Watch this. Worship is a weapon that restores the truth. It restores the truth. So it drives out lies, but it restores the truth. Again, it doesn't, God doesn't leave you with a vacuum. He replaces it with truth. God will always replace a lie with truth. Look at this in John 4, 23 through 24. And it says, by the, by the time, but the time is coming indeed is here now when true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and in truth and the father, look at this. I want you to get this. I want you to, I want you to internalize this. The Father is looking for those that will worship him that way. He, let, me, let me just stop. I've got one more verse. Let me just stop and say this. He did not say that true worshipers worship the Father when they feel like it, when everything's going well, when their friends came with them to church when the job is the best job in the world, I'm getting paid more than I've ever been paid before. That's not what he's he's saying. He's not encouraging us to worship him in emotion. He says in spirit and in truth. Therefore, he is looking for those who get it. He's looking for those who can worship through the negative season, worship through the worst job ever, worship through the worst paycheck, worship through the increase of the cost of living, worship through the worst marriage, quote unquote, ever. Worship through family issues, worship through national issues. You see, he's looking for people that can put their emotions aside and say, God, you're still God. God, in my spirit, I'm still worshiping you. In my spirit, I still know who you are. In my spirit, I still know that I'm blessed. In my spirit, I know that you've done so much for me. In my spirit, I can't deny worship. In my spirit, I've got to shout because you're so good. In my spirit. Because here's the thing, your spirit knows truth. And the truth of your testimony is worship. And when we begin to worship beyond our situation, worship beyond our emotions, worship beyond our negative nature, God goes, oh, I see you. And his word says is that when we catch his attention with praise, when we catch his attention with worship, listen, he inhabits our praise. He inhabits our praise. 
I don't know about you, but I'm trying to draw God near. Come on, God. I'm better with him than away from him. I'm trying to beckon him in. And if it takes worship, if it takes knowledge over feelings, if it just takes me looking foolish to other people, I don't care. Because when I have an attitude of gratitude, my freedoms is going to be that I worship how I'm led to worship. I worship because God is worthy of my worship. Listen, David looked like a fool when he was dancing down the, the street in front of the ark because he had just celebrated a victory. And all he could do was just worship and you know what they thought he was crazy but God said look at that worshiper if God thought it was crazy he would have left it out of the word but worship liberates us and boy we begin to wield a weapon in the spirit it begins to change our environment, change our lives, change our homes, change our family, change our friends, change our neighborhood. But it all starts with an attitude of gratitude. Let me ask you something. What are you grateful for today? Are you taking that blessing and are you praising God for it? God, you've been so good, but I got to deal with this thing. And you never give God praise for it. What is it today that you just need to nail down and you just need to say, God, you've just been good. You just have been good. And I haven't stopped. Just be honest. Maybe repent of it. Say, I haven't stopped and giving you adequate worship for what you've done. But I'm going to do it now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer up that blessing as worship. I'm going to offer up that raise as worship. I'm going to offer up my family as worship. I'm going to offer up my time of trial as worship, God, because you're worthy. God, you're worthy in the good seasons and you're worthy in the bad seasons. But I haven't stopped long enough to give you some praise. What have you not praised God for? And what do you need to turn back into worship? What do you need to turn back into worship today? Are you with me? Listen, I want you to go into this season with an attitude of gratitude that is indifferent of whatever's going on in your life. I want you to go in with a worship that wields against the enemy that he can't even stand in. He can't even come close to you because you just keep wielding worship. You just keep wielding gratitude. You just keep being grateful. You just keep being thankful and you're rejoicing. Again, I say rejoice. And let your prayer and supplications be mixed with thanksgiving. And you know what he'll do? He'll guard and he'll protect you. In Christ Jesus. Come on. Come on, somebody. Come on. Give God some praise right now in this house. Why don't we do this? Because I'm just, man, I'm, I'm just sharing some truth with you. I'm just, sharing, I'm just trying to share something that could change our lives and change our world and change West Louisiana. But you got to get it. Amen.